so are these are these tests they're not actually finding cancer but they're finding predictors of cancer is that uh, they accurate? don't find anything I do the work from epidemiological research through decades and decades and I found out that when the LDH not to be confused with LDL cholesterol mm -hmm. the LDH is elevated that's telling us that the antioxidants are out of the antioxidants aren't doing their job because what we have we have free radicals and the free radicals create the oxidative stress the oxidative stress is the fertile ground for cancer so that's only one test there's another one called triglycerides you heard of that oh yeah, absolutely. everyone knows about triglycerides they think they do but really they don't because first of all what causes triglycerides to go up very simply, sweets and sugar, even stress, can cause the triglycerides to go up. So, what does that mean? When it comes to cancer, it means everything. The triglycerides go up, the red blood cells stick together in clumps and piles, they can't get into the tiniest blood vessel in the human body, which is the capillary. Because normally, a red cell, it's kind of like a disc and it squeezes like in a U shape and it goes through these tiny, tiny capillaries. When the triglycerides are over 100, the red blood cells are sticking together in clumps and piles. They can no longer get into the capillaries. We lose miles and miles of circulation. And what that's saying simply is anoxia. And where do you think the cancer grows? in anoxia, meaning lack of oxygen. So that's just another idea. And each one of these tests ha are a piece of the puzzle because the doctors have this medical range, I have this nutritional range, plus my interpretation is totally different. And they work in tandem. We can see, for example, is the bone marrow destroyed? The bone marrow may have the platelets way low, like 100,000, when they should be up at 250,000. So that's, the blood is too thin. The bone, bone marrow is not doing its job of producing platelets. The bone marrow also is producing the T cells and the B cells that form the lymphocytes and also neutrophils and even the monocytes, which are candida fungus and uh, the uh, eosinophils, which is usually parasites. And all of these white blood cells work together to give us an idea where the strengths and weaknesses are. And all this information would be of no value at all unless we had a solution. And again, there's where many decades of work have taught me what works and what doesn't. If it didn't work, I'd be out of business. <laughs> because what I do is I have the client do the program, I make a notebook form, and it's 70 page long notebook form, their own personal nutrition 101 book. Tells them what to do. Tells them which food they should eat, which food they shouldn't eat. It tells them um, exactly what the future might be if they don't do what I say. Because you can see all of these things five years before it occurs into a symptom mm. when you study the blood work. And that's the value and the beauty of the blood work.